Frankfurt School is not the producer of a thin parboiled sausage made of pure pork in a casing of sheep's intestine. The Frankfurt School was founded in 1929 in Frankfurt, Germany. In 1933, after Hitler's rise to power, the school migrated to Geneva, Switzerland, then to New York City in 1935, where it was affiliated to Columbia University. After World War II in the 1950s, part of its intellectuals went back to West Germany and re-established the school in Frankfurt. The other part remained in USA, where they inspired radicalism of the youth in the 60s and new social movements, like anti-war, anti-colonial, and ecological movements, and so on. The Frankfurt School perspective of critical investigation is open-minded and self-critical, and is based upon Freudian, Marxist, and Hegelian premises of idealist philosophy. To fill the omissions of 19th century classical Marxism, which did not address 20th century social problems, they applied the methods of anti-positivist sociology, of psychoanalysis, and of existentialism. The question that intellectuals from Frankfurt School struggled to answer was, why the progress of capitalism and modernity leads not to liberation, but to regressive ideologies and repressive forms of power which can take an authoritarian turn similar to Nazism, Fascism, and Stalinism. Their answers were rooted in Marxism and Weberian sociology. 1. Bureaucratization of society, or mass society. This refers to notions such as Marxist theory of commodity fetishism, like buying Nike Air Max shoes would make you a superstar athlete like Michael Jordan. Lukacs, reification, which is in short the domination of things over people and Max Weber's bureaucratization. Political and economic institutions which structure daily life for the majority of people. This is the bureaucratization of society. In modern times, the term has taken on more importance and broader scope with the advent of mass media and the internet. 2. Structures of production, which contributes to the obedience of the proletariat and sympathizes for pro-capitalist or fascist ideologies. It's characterized by top-down and instrumental structures of command in factories. 3. Culture is instrumental. In producing consent and justifying hierarchies, the rise of the culture industry presented by Theodore Adorno and Max Horkheimer, they consider that culture is governed in a similar way to factories. Culture industry refers to commercial and state-owned organizations in the arts and media committed to the direct production, sponsorship, display, and distribution of cultural goods and services, such as exhibitions, sports, events, books, newspapers, and films. Knowledge and technology became the sources for domination. They serve class and state interests. The organized structures of production entered even to the sphere of culture, culture industry. In this situation, the masses became the object of tribalist ideologies, for example, anti-Semitism. 4. Political, economic, and cultural crisis creates the need for charismatic, tribalist leaders. 5. The lack of orientation in modern world gives second life to traditional authorities and justifications. To define the methodological program of the Frankfurt School, there are six main points. Historical analysis, totality, ideology, supradisciplinarity, critique of the everyday life, and reason. 1. Historical analysis. Human subjects are considered as agents of history. Their beliefs and actions are dependent on historical circumstances. But they always tend to transform these circumstances, fight oppression, and seek freedom. In some cases, they decide to turn away from freedom. 2. Totality. Every phenomenon needs to be analyzed not in its separateness, but as a part of a totality of the system, even if the system is unstable. 3. Ideology. Ideology is not just simply error or distortion of the truth. It's not only individual manipulation, it is rather systemic, structural. It is embodied in social structures. It seems to be natural. The role of social sciences is to denaturalize it. 4. Supradisciplinarity. Philosophy must hold social sciences as responsible for human fate and the overcoming of the idealist-materialist division and the separateness of disciplines. 5. Critique of the everyday life. If we want to understand the way in which ideology acts, then we need to be more interested in everyday life and the ordinary practices of the masses. The critique is possible through observation, public participation, and interviews. 6. Reason. Belief that we need to liberate reason from oppressive condition. 
that it is possible to do that. This is based on Hegelian philosophy. The rationalizing faculty had thereby become a tyrannical process according to the Frankfurt philosophers, through which all human experience of the world would be subjected to infinitely repetitive rational explanation. A process in which reason had turned from being liberating to being the instrumental means of categorizing and classifying an infinitely various reality. 